for me ping up. See if I can get it on my own page. Oh, it's pinged up now. Good. The language Timothy the Lang. Sorry about folks, Madam Director swearing I'm not at. Love you. <laughs> Good morning, folks. Morning, Marlon. Morning, Kevin, John, Trisha, Christine, um, Rosemary, Wanda, Hugh, Mags, Callum, Joan, Neil, Sue, Morning, Lillian, Morning, David, Morning, Derek, Nori, Christine. Right, that's more than 100 on board, so let's get this broadcast underway. It's Andy Truck Davey, who's the truck in that home, in his office, in South and North Lanarkshire, where it is clearing up at the moment, and it is 13 degrees, although rain is in the forecast. That's the weather forecast for South and North Lanarkshire. If you want to know what the weather forecast like for you, are, look at the rain bloody windy. All right, so let's get this broadcast underway. Okay, this is the review of the news for Tuesday. The 28th of June, 2022. All right. Tuesday started with three main headlines in the rags. Putin bombs a Ukrainian shop and mall, killing at least 13 shoppers. UK new army chief, uh, chief of staff, is tub thumping again. And he wants UK forces to join the fray in the Ukraine. General Sir Patrick Saunders, previously um, famous for sending, selling takeaway chicken when he was a colonel, um, <laughs> Is a, a danger to the UK. Hey, anywho, he should get back to selling Kentucky Fried Chicken again, should the Colonel. Sorry, General Saunders. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to end up with nooks raining rain and doing and taffy as a bottom. Anyway, a General Chicken Seller um, Saunders, he says the Ukraine is Europe's 1937 moment all over again. What a lot of fish. Right, also the Telegraph runs on the First Minister's statement that, and the, a, that the UK is weakened if Scottish democracy is disrespected and the referendum bill is blocked. And I have to say that the First Minister's got a point because for 300 years, four, a, um, a three of the nations in this union thought they were in it voluntarily. Um, Northern Ireland didn't join until 100 years ago, so... Um, and it makes a mockery of the Treaty of Union, you know. Um, and to quote Sir Geoffrey Cox, previous, the last previous qualified um, Attorney General down that road, um, no nation can be held in a treaty against its will. All right. And they, of course, the national, the national runs with the headline that Scotland's people's will must prevail. OK, moving on on Tuesday. Tuesday started with the Pravda. We another NHS bad story. NHS Highlands pays out 2.8 million in compensation to staff who have been bullied. There's been a bullying culture that's existed in the bog for many years, right? There has supposedly been a culture change in the bog, and the payouts are a uh, for past cases. But um, the latest support I've seen says that the, the bullying culture in NHS Highlands is still there. For some reason, doctors like to think they can love the over people. They're almost like the house of thieves and carpetbaggers in NHS Highlands. All right. Right, moving on Tuesday. An Aberdeen-based pipeline technique. Um, a company buys three divisions of American pipeline. A company, Stanley Black and a... Oh, what's that one? Stanley Black and... Well, anyway... The new acquisition costs 200 million quid and we'll see the Aberdeen Bow uh, um, based firm triple its workforce to a thousand. The firm will buy CRC Evans pipeline and induction, a uh, pipeline heat and induction and Stanley inspections. The pipeline technique CEO, Frederick Kostrick, um, said it would allow the company to expand its operations in oil, gas, renewables and in carbon catcher. So, good business, good news business story for, the, uh, um, for Scotland. Okay. Right, moving on Tuesday, Scottish Power to add solar panels to its wind farm in England near Burnley. The scheme will generate enough uh, power to power 2,500 homes in England. And Davy says, you know, they should all be doing that unless the land's still being used for farming. 
most of these bloody wind farms are up there in the hills and things like that. They're up at a good height, good place to fit solar panels. As long as you don't interrupt the, and interfere with the sheep feeding, then it'll not be that bad. So, aye, so when a race should be put right round, all these wind farms where it can be done, where the, where the land isn't really being used for farming or sheep farming, all right. So, not a bad idea, and it should be done in Scotland as well. Moving on, and Tuesday, Think Tank Reform Scotland says taxes need to, um, a, to rise in Scotland to compensate for an aging population. The Think Tank uh, says that the Scottish Government should uh, move from an income-based uh, tax system to a wealth-based tax system. It also said that uh, the tax base needs to be broadened out, in other words, tax more things, all right, and in more sectors. Now, the Think Tank also suggests um, investing in renewables, and uh, the Taxing Times report by Heather McCauley, um, a former advisor to the Scottish and New Zealand governments, um, he said the whole tax system should be ripped up, ripped up and started again. And I have to say, with the UK's um, well-perforated tax laws, it's absolutely right. The tax system should be ripped up, the tax code should be simplified, and they should collect some bloody tax. Right, moving on, Tuesday. And a report released by Public Health Scotland says infant mortality is at a 10-year high. 3.9 babies in 1,000 don't live past one year old. Now, the rate was a um, the rate was 3.1 in 2020. The National Records of Scotland also released a report that infant births were up 2%, but it's still the second lowest rate on records. Now, the Scottish Government have triggered an inquiry into, uh, into infant mortality as is required by law when rates change. The Public Health Scotland said the increase in infant deaths are not COVID related. So for some reason, um, over two years of COVID has been way is, um, infant mortality rate in Scotland went from 3.1% per thousand to 3.9% per thousand. Now, um, they're saying that it's no COVID related, but there's been a lot of pressures on the NHS, so we'll probably find that it is COVID related in the long run, as more and more staff um, were not available for my, uh, infant services or a, uh, what do you call it, services, maternity services. Okay, so infant mortality is up, but population, uh, the amount of babies being born is also up by 2%, still too low. So kiddies, Get out there. I know it's in the middle of a cost of living crisis. Things are difficult. But get out there and populate Scotland for us, please. A wee bit of fornication and the oh. good of the nation. All right. Also, Tuesday, um, cancer waiting times in Scotland a, um, a rise with 25% of those starting treatment waiting more than the 62 days target. Now, this particular drop in performance is COVID-related. Cancer Care UK White has taken a hit. Scotland's NHS Cancer Services is still outperforming England and Wales. So it is a UK White problem. All right. Um, so when the cuckoos in the nest are screaming about problems in NHS Scotland, what they have to remember is NHS Scotland is still outperforming any other NHS on these islands. All right, moving on. Tuesday. Tuesday afternoon rolls around and First Minister Nicola Sturgeon gives an update on plans for Indiref 2. She also introduced the new Indiref 2 bill to Holyrood and asked the Lord Advocate Dorothy Bain to refer it to the Supreme Court to ensure it is within the competence of the Scottish Parliament. The First Minister also warns Westminster if the Supreme Court rules the bill is out with the competence of the Scottish Parliament, the next general election will become a plebiscite election. Right. Now, after her statement, the cuckoos in the nest go bonkers, right? Dross goes on on the pri priorities, sorry, pri the priorities of the people of Scotland, right? And he talks about a, um, a education, health, cost of living crisis. The first minister tells Dross, we can multitask, and democracy must be served. And the reason we need independence is because of your bloody Tory made cost of living crisis. Right, next up was Poverty Pie. Poverty Pie says the same thing, and the FM tells him Labour are an irrelevance and will remain so for as long as they stand against democracy and are democ democracy deniers. 
Now, apparently, stuff shut Alex Cole Hamilton. It got his say also. He says, no, Davey's getting a verse into a relevant, so I can't hear um, a Alex Cole Hamilton. But what I could hear was the First Minister's reply. All right, the First Minister tells the stuff shut um, a, that the, the will of the Scottish people must prevail and the democracy must be served. Anyway, uh, the proposed date for India Rev 2 is 19th of October 2023. Now, I expect the minute that the Supreme Court says that the independence referendum will be within this, is within the uh, competence of the Scottish Parliament, Davy expects Westminster to start negotiating for Section 30 of that because they will want their say. And it's at that point Johnson will get a wake up call and he'll be told, boy, you better get involved in this because they're going to have it anyway. And if the international community recognises them, then there's bugger all England can do to stop it or block it. Right. Now, on the plebiscite election thing, um, that was interesting because right away, the propaganda machine jumps on it. But we'll get a wee bit merry that further in, all right? I've seen that Alex was in total meltdown. Couldn't he hear the area when twat, but I've seen him wagging his finger and screaming like a banshee. Just because David couldn't see him, couldn't hear him, I could actually see the stuff shut last time, which is quite funny. Right, moving on Tuesday and after the First Minister's statement, the prab, the prab that go into meltdown. The, uh, the political editor in Scotland says there won't be India Rev 2, so plebiscite election in 2024 for Glenn Campbell. Mr Campbell then tries to uh, um, set the rules for the first-past-the-post 2024 election. Glenn Campbell says it doesn't matter if the SNP sweep the vote and take all the seats. If they don't get 50% of the vote, or 50% plus of the, uh, plus of the vote, then Westminster should ignore the outcome of the election. Now, Mr. Campbell seems to think that we can, uh, um, uh, that he can rewrite the rules for first past the post. All right. Now, the way first past the post works is whoever gets the most MPs wins the bloody election. But no, for Mr. Campbell, he wants to change the rules. But if the rules are changed the way that Mr. Campbell thinks they should be on the question of a plebiscite election, then surely with the Tory government, which is in power at the moment, has absolutely no legitimacy. It was um, put in power on only 34% of the UK-wide vote, most of it in England. So, um, surely they're no legit, surely that's no legitimate government down there, but then they get 50% of the vote, even though they get the most seats. So as I say, the political director of BBC Scotland's on it like a flash. You know, it doesn't matter how many MPs they get, if they don't get 50% of the vote, it's null and void. 50% positive votes, sorry. It's null and void. Well, you know what? That's the, that's the line they're going to take. Even if the Supreme Court, um, if the Supreme Court uh, rules that the referendum is legal and Scotland goes ahead and uh, has that referendum, then Westminster don't intend to respect the outcome. And uh, we Ross also said he won't take part in a, a, a pretend referendum without a section 30 order. Shows you the arrogance of the unionist, the unionist, isn't it? Never mind the will of the people. It's only the will of the unionist that couldn't. Only the will of the unionist people that couldn't. Never mind the rest of us. Sparner. Anyway, we, we draw says he's not going to take part in any pretend referendum. Good. You can take your 19% of voters. Will you? I'll just guarantee a bigger yes result for us. Because we draw knows, hey, he will have had if it's ruled to be legal by the Supreme Court, they will be given a franchise. If they don't use the franchise, it doesn't matter. It doesn't negate the outcome. Never has done. Disney Day in a general election, like I've just spoken about. And it Disney Day in a Scottish election. And it Disney Day in referenda. If you take the Brexit referendum, I think the turnout was only something like 47% of the electorate turnout. They vote on that. But they actioned Brexit. All right. So, moving on, um, then Scotland's place in the, uh, moving on, Scotland's place in the UK would appear isn't in a voluntary union of nations, according to the Pravda, and Westminster, a, um, are, uh, Westminster apparently thinks that we are a colony and a belonging. Two can be ignored and suppressed. Well, you know, they did that in every other one of the nations that go independence to that pout of thieves and carpetbaggers. So, what will happen is, if this referendum doesn't go ahead, 2024, 
single issue election. We'll sweep the bloody board. We'll send down 59 MPs or 56 MPs, as long as the majority of SNP MPs, and they'll get that out of these carpet baggers and declare. Right, moving on. Thursday, and after the First Minister's statement, Bojo the Clown spokesperson tells the Scottish press, Bojo's no playing, and now is not the time. Davy says, it's always now is not the time with these spanners, isn't it? You know why? Because if they were to say, no, you can't, then that would be saying that Scotland is a colony straight out. And that would start the other nations within this so-called union of equals um, looking at their own positions. And it should also be a warning to the English people that the elect, the, the state, is willing to suppress the will of the people. And that will include the English people if the English people want to do something that the state doesn't want them to do. For example, the public order bill. But we'll get a wee bit more of that further down as well. Right, moving on. Uh, Tuesday, Mr. Salmond is uh, interviewed on the Pravda after the NDRF2 announcement. He's asked if Nicola is the right person to lead the campaign and if uh, his Alba party will back her. Alex Salmond said she's the natural person to lead the campaign because she's the leader of the nation. She is the First Minister. And he says, aye, the gloves are off. All past differences are put to one side. Eyes on the prize is basically what Alex says. We're going to get in about it. So, the unity of the Yes movement is starting to coalesce, and that will coalesce even faster now that we have a date to aim for. All right, moving on. Tuesday evening, and the Supreme Court says it will take and look at the Scottish Government's NDRF2 bill. It's not clear if the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers will get involved. Um, it, it, would have, it, it wouldn't be a good look for the criminal cabal to get involved. We go away has said four times that the UK criminal cabal won't challenge the referendum bill, but it's believed they will supply money for others to challenge the bill. It is believed Scotland and the Union and their dirty tricks division will take the bill, take the bill on in court, and that'll be paid for by dirty money because Scotland, Scotland and the Union is a bit like the Scottish Unionist Trust. Nobody really knows that much about them secretive organisation, and nobody knows where the funding's coming from, apparently. But a uh, um, few years back, Wings Over, Wing Over, Wings Over Scotland exposed it all. All right. Right, moving on. Tuesday in Bojo, the international and domestic law blighting clown is in Germany. He's in Bavaria. He's at the G7 meeting, uh, or meeting of the G7 leaders. Um, a Bojo tells the press that the Ukrainian invasion wouldn't he, ha wouldn't he have happened if Putin was a woman? And what uh, Bojo the Clown says is, what's going on in the Ukraine is toxic, <laughs> is toxic masculinity. All right, so that's what's going on. Um, apparently toxic masculinity is at the heart of what's going on out there. And Bojo thinks the world would be a better place if there was more female leaders. It would definitely be a better place if he wasn't there. Um, hey, Ruth, uh, is there something wrong with Dave O'Ellen? Is he no happy that Mr. Salmon's turned around and said, let's get behind this? I've seen a wee post by Craig Murray and all, saying he's going to eat his heart and well done, Nicola. But, I mean, Dave's out there in the loony brigade end of what's going on in the movement. And he's been a disruptive pain in the bahooki for a while now. And all his wacky theories have all been wrong. But eh, that'll no stop him from feeling bitter about it. But I still like Dave, he's a crack guy. Right, moving on Tuesday. And Turkey relents and, and it will eh, approve eh, Finland and Sweden's entry into NATO. At, eh, at today's eh, NATO summit in Spain, eh, I think it's in Madrid. Right, um, in order to get Turkey's approval, Finland and Sweden agreed to speed up extradition requests from Turkey for wanted Kurds in both their countries. So, um, Finland and Sweden hadn't been turning Kurds or a Turkey who were on the wanted list, but in order to get into NATO, they have had to agree that they will turn these people out. Now, I don't know what the Turkey's uh, legal system's like or the justice system's like, but uh, for some reason, Sweden and uh, Finland hadn't been complying with a uh, request for extradition for people who were wanted in Turkey. Now they're going to comply with these requests so they can get into NATO. Okay. Right, moving on. Tuesday, Defence Secretary 
former criminal cabal, Ben Wallace, ex-bathroom wear salesman, I believe, uh, says UK spend on the military to be increased in light of the Ukrainian conflict. There's a Davy says here, and I mean it. Davy says, can he sort out cost of living crisis? Kids gone hungry, parents skipping meals, or living off the children's leftovers. Granny riding the bus to stay with him. Granny eating once a day because she can't afford to eat more than once a day. And the worst state pension in the developed world. But hungry populations don't matter. And the magic money tree doesn't work for hungry kids. Doesn't work for cold grannies. Doesn't work for ordinary people. But the magic money tree works for war. So another 1.8 billion on military equipment, which will be given to the bloody Ukrainians. We'll get Colonel Saunders, the takeaway chicken seller, sorry, General Saunders, the takeaway chicken seller. He wants to put UK forces on the gun, causing World War Three to span up. And it looks like the, it looks like this, the idiots in the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers is going to eat Colonel Saunders the fucking money to do it. They should get back to selling Kentucky Fried Chicken the spanner. He's a danger to the population. Also Tuesday, EU campaigner, this was this one's really important, EU campaigner Steve Bray charged over noisy protests outside the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers. Um, uh, the new law banning noisy public protest in England and Wales came into effect yesterday. All right, Steve said, um, he is a he is to appear in court and he will demand a jury trial. He will fight the North Korean style war. Right. And a uh, but Steve uh, I mean Steve uh, says he's going to continue to protest and he doesn't care if he ends up in jail because that's exactly where he's gone when the public order bill passes and comes into force down that road. Because Steve, for what he's doing outside the House of Commons. He would be liable to go to jail for up to two years. So, um, it's not looking good in that one, folks. Draconian laws, North Korean style, as Steve Bray puts it, are in place. All right, also Tuesday, three Tories are thinking of defecting to Labour, and the two newest MPs are sworn into the House of Thieves and Carpetbaggers, where they can get their snouts into the trough. No doubt they'll be doing a bojo and heading off to a local hospital to get their sinuses changed so that they can keep their nose in the trough. You know, they move the nostrils from there up to here, along with the rest of the nose, so that the gub can get in the trough. Right, that's the stories I picked to you to talk about, folks. I hope you found them interesting. I hope you found them informative. So what we'll do now is we'll have a wee look at what the rags have to say this morning. Okay. So let's have a look. <coughs> what the rags go to say this morning? Scotland's paper, Andy Ref Gamble as Sturgeon goes to Supreme Court. Johnson refuses to meet manifesto pledge on defence spending. Um, and SNP seek court nod for 2020 referendum. That's the Times. The Telegraph has Supreme Court asked to rule on Andy Ref too. There's no, uh, yesterday was speculating that Supreme Court would do what they did in uh, 2012 and tell Cameron and Salmon to piss off it was a political issue, but it appears because uh, the referenda act's been written under Scots law, it's now a Supreme Court issue. So, um, it would appear also the Cabinet split over the spe uh, defence spending levels as Johnson attempts to rally NATO leaders. Um, a, and apparently ele electric vehicles could pay tax by the mile. And GPs rally against having to work Saturdays. And GPs, by the way, are looking for a 30% pay rise doing that. Right, the Daily Record has. Legal battle wounds over new vote. I'll see you in court. First Minister goes to Supreme Court for approval of India F2 on October 19, 2023. After I, Sturgeon will fight general election as a single issue independence. Right, the I has Sturgeon's new bid to split from UK. I'm afraid that's a totally false, totally false headline. The United Kingdom is about the realm. That's going to do with the royal family. The realm consists of Scotland, England, Northern Ireland, Wales, and many overseas territories. That's the United Kingdom. What we are trying to break up is Great Britain. 
and return it to its natural state of Scotland and England. So, that headline shows you how poor quality journalism is going on in the UK at this point in time. They don't even know the difference between the UK and, and Great Britain, the Spanners. One's a state, one's a realm. They are clueless. Absolutely clueless. Right? Metro, go, the Metro goes on. Um, you're the indie refs. FM sets October date, and she asked top London judges to rule if it's legal. What she did was she pulled her leg and she pulled the car out for the under the buggers yesterday. And she warned Westminster and all, if you try and block this, and if, you, if the Supreme Court tries and blocks this, then we're not going to have a referendum, we're going to have a plebiscite election, and when we return the majority of MPs, they'll just tell you we're leaving. The Herald has Sturgeon's dramatic gamble and move to force new referendum. It was not a dramatic gamble at all. I just say that whips a feet out be under the unionists who claim that this is a voluntary union, but only if they say so. Wow. The Scottish loony rag the Daily Fail has. Europe consumed by war, a desperate cost of living crisis, the worst NHS cancer rating times ever, yet Sturgeon thinks this is the time to launch a cynical sham referendum. That shamefully ignores the will of the Scottish people. We answered the question loud in 2014, so why won't she listen? Because uh, democracy is a living, breathing thing, you right-wing knuckle-dragging spanners. Democracy is based on the fact that people get to change their opinion every time there's an election and every time circumstances change. That's democracy. That's how it works. As to the Europe and war, cost of living crisis. If you want to have a real look behind it, you'll find that the UK sticky fingers are our bait. The UK and war and the cost of living crisis and the Brexit mess. The Scotsman has Sturgeon names day ahead of long battle for referendum. It won't be a long battle. The Supreme Court says they're looking at it. The ruling will rotate long. There's only five Scottish judges sitting in the Supreme Court. It will not no, no take them long to decide whether the laws be. The, the referendum bill would be written collect, correctly under Scots law. No, because that's all they can do. As we know for the Porrigation Department case, they can't overturn Scots law. When they do that, they broke the Treaty of Union. The other loony rag, the Daily Express, goes on. Pretend poll marks a sad day for Scotland. No, well, at Disney, what it does is says that you fucking idiots and the right wing and the rest of the UK are fecking democracy deniers. That's what it says. These are the bloody disgrace. These headlines who want to deny the democratic process to the people of Scotland are the bloody disgrace. And every time you see an MP or an MSP who is not of the SNP, the Greens, then mind and tell them straight to their face, you're a democracy denier and you're a dictator. The National has... Save the day, October 19, 2023. You have just 16 months to save Scotland from Westminster. Join our movement today at www.thenational.scot forward slash subscribe. So there you go. Um, and what's the nut job paper? The, car, the comic paper go for us a day. And the Daily Star in Scotland has manhunt for sweaty, rubber-loving freak, squeaky bum time. Locals have a vow to catch a masked person clad in black latex gimp suit who has returned to terrorise women, according to the Daily Star of Scotland. So there you go. There's a gimp out there that's scaring women. <laughs> right, folks, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you found it entertaining, and I hope you found it um, informative, and I hope there's a wee couple of bits in there that made you chuckle, chuckle and I hope you enjoyed the wee bits of ranting going on there. But what really is interesting, folks, and this is important to get your heat wrapped around, what really is interesting is in Scotland, right now, we have the might of the UK press and the cuckoos in the nest all trying to deny democracy and the will of the Scottish people. Wow. That shows you. There's no, there's no union equals at all. Okay, let's move on to the usual stuff. We have a date to work for folks. I expect, as does the First Minister for the UK Supreme Court, to rule that this bill is legal. And I expect in the REF 2023 to go ahead on the 19th of October. I also expect that Bojo the Clown will eventually give 
and want to get involved, so there will be a section 30 order. But we'll watch that one. I don't care one way or another. Even if it goes to the plebiscite election, they know it's finished. They can either get their ass on the table or no. So, hey, partisan politics, put them away now, folks. Mr. Salmon's spoken, everybody's spoken. Uh, even Craig Murray says he's going to eat his hat. Um, if Dave Llewellyn's not happy with the situation, that's up to Dave Llewellyn. He's one guy, one way, one guy. I mean, he's a nice guy, too. You know, I don't know what's been wrong with him lately. So, hey, partisan politics and focus. Eyes on the prize, learn your how you go on. He's it's time to win hearts and minds. Get in about it. Okay, um, support the independent media, support broadcast in Scotland, support independent live, support indie live radio, support Caledon Media, support independent bloggers and bloggers, and if they've got a crowdfund, they're gone, and you've got a couple of shekels in your pocket, you spare, throw them in the pot, these people do great work. All right, and uh, health messaging, COVID's still on the rise again, folks, so follow the guidance, face coverings and enclosed public spaces. Clean hands and surfaces regularly. When it comes to social distancing, use your napper. And uh, if you've got a sniffles, mask up and social distance. And if you're still testing, please submit your test results to NHS Scotland so that we can continue to map how much of this is in the community. Because the Office for National Statistics sur surveys are probably not that accurate. Okay. Right, I have to go. It's time to take uh, Madam Director stroke the dragon to work. And she's standing right there with her mask going growling at me. So it's time to go, folks. We'll see you all tomorrow today all again. You guys have a lovely day. Have a nice day. Bye now.